and makes them neighbors and takes neighbors and makes them family of God. Praise God. Question for you to think about is, do you know the names of your neighbors on your street? That might be a good place to start if you don't, to start reaching out to your neighbors. So I want to go forward now to stay on track uh, and go to the next part of the discipleship because we believe that community groups can help us reach. But reaching is not enough, okay? You want to make a connection. So community groups help us connect. And really this video encapsulated all of it because just so you know, she does it now because she watched them do it. She was empowered to go do it herself. So she was reached, she got connected, she grew and got saved and grew, and then she watched them and did it with them for so much time. Isn't that interesting, by the way? That her training wasn't coming to a training, it was just observing how they did everything. And then she just replicated it. She started doing the same thing in her house. How cool was that? In other words, we can learn more from being a part of the experience than being in a lecture. If I could do this, if I could have you join one of my community groups, you would learn more from just being a part of it. You, you see what I'm saying? And you would know how to do it. And of course, we would do some teaching and talks about how it goes. So the second part of the leg is community groups help us connect. And let me give you a, a look into my heart on Sunday morning. Sunday morning, I saw a younger couple sitting over here on the left, never seen them before. And just so you know how Pastor Ryan's heart works, and maybe um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast this off to you and, and, and help. I'm praying that, that we all will catch this burden. But when I come into church, don't be offended by what I say. But I often don't see you guys first. I see new people first. Is that okay? Cornelius, I didn't even notice you were here just now. I just now noticed you were here. No, I say. I don't. If you and don't be offended if you see me dip out of a conversation real quick, because you know why? I'm on mission guest. I'm on mission disconnected, and I want to get that person connected. And that's why I don't want to stop all the time and talk to the church people because when someone makes a decision to come on Sunday morning to a church, that was a huge decision. They wrestled with it. They researched our website for like an hour. They went to our social media. They asked us, they sent us an email. They sent us a private message asking where we're supposed to wear. People, and they're like, where, where do the kids go? Yada, yada, yada. Listen, the decision to come to church today is like a chore now for people. And it is vital. And this is not even meant to be for Sunday morning training, but here we go. We're, we're talking about Sunday morning. It is vital that we look outside of our typical people we talk to and our friends, and we look for that young couple that was by themselves I've never seen before. Because here's what went through my mind and heart. Does anyone know them? Do they know anyone? How are they doing spiritually? Will they get plugged in? Will they get lost? Will they leave God and leave the church? Why do I, why do I go through that in my heart and my mind and my, while I'm preaching? Well, because that's the story I keep getting when people leave the church. Either they were hurt by someone in church, they never really experienced God, or no one ever really loved them in the church. And so I'm trying to stop that trend. And so I'm casting that burden onto you tonight that on Sunday mornings is the greatest place to connect someone into your group. And by the way, Yes, I said we don't want church, we don't want groups to be full of church people, but a lot of our church people actually aren't saved. Some of the people you connect to your group, you find out, don't have true salvation. They have churchation, or they've been converted into churchianity, I call it. You ever heard of that, churchianity? I'm going to write a book on it. Churchianity is someone who goes to church, and their relationship with God is based on church and religion not Christ. I had no idea that someone I was inviting to my house was not saved. They weren't. So connection is so important. And here's the thing. Connection is more important than a Bible lesson. Do not underestimate the power of relationship and connection. I often tell my disciple makers, my group leaders, that None of this happens unless they want to come back. 
if you don't have a relationship with someone, I'm not saying you have to have the best brownies in the world. That does help. If you're a good host, that really helps. But if this is your MO, if your MO is everyone comes in a room and you do a lecture like I'm doing right now tonight, because this is a train I'm allowed to slash conference, right? If all I did in my group was yap, 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 and never hear from someone, there's no relationship there. That's why my, when, uh, my Friday night family group, we spent at least 30 minutes around the table talking, having food, and getting to catch up with everyone. And that's on purpose so I can know where they are. Then we get into maybe playing a game or reading scripture and praying together and seeing how each other are doing. So connection is important. By the way, CDC suggests that to help cope with stress during COVID-19 pandemic, we should connect with others. Talk with people you trust about your concerns and how you are feeling. Connect with your community or faith-based organization. CDC is recommending that people connect to their faith-based organization because they're acknowledging it does something good. Well, what do you know? But here's the thing. What if the church isn't ready for those people? We have to be ready. The time is now, church. God has aligned this for us to do life together with our community. It's awesome. Let me go to the next one. Community groups help us connect. I could go all night on that one. It's my favorite topic. It's my favorite topic. Because here's the thing. You will know sometimes what to help your people with when you've taken the time to connect and hear what they're going through. But a lot of times what we do is, and we should do this, we should have a curriculum sometimes ready to go. Like you pick a book you wanna go through. Wow, that was awesome. But some groups, they're more about finding out where people are and then addressing those topics. It's like a, um, a needs-based kind of group. But here's the thing. Next one is community groups help us grow. Look at these two scriptures. Colossians 3, 16 says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom he gives. Could you imagine that Jesus would reach Peter and then have him hang out with his buddies and then never teach him anything? What would be the point? So groups can't just be about you know, hey, let me help you out with this need and reach you and, and let me, hey, let's hang out and just play games all the time. You'll get to the point of like a close connection and you grew a good connection, but people are hungry for truth. People need help with their marriages. People need help even with finances, relational issues, kids, parenting, understanding the Bible, forgiveness, grace. What is the law? Why is the law mentioned so much in the Bible? And are we still supposed to live by the commandments? All these questions are going to come out, and the Bible has the answers. And so we are to fill ourselves with the gospel of Jesus Christ and teach and counsel each other with all wisdom he gives. Look at the next one, Colossians 2, 6 through 7. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you overflow with, th with thankfulness. Jesus is the foundation that we need to teach people what it means, who he is, and what he wants us to do. What's his will for our lives? And we talked a lot about that on Sunday. What does grow mean? How does community groups help grow? What does it mean? Grow means to mature in our faith from a babe in Christ to an active disciple of Christ. Grow also means to heal and overcome. We have groups that help people heal through life crisis and grieve, grieving and counseling. Sometimes growth spiritually can't happen until someone deals with the trauma in their life. We have two different kinds of groups, and I'll get into them in a, uh, later on before we close, but there's discipleship groups, and there's, I've, I've narrowed it down to two. Discipleship groups who are focusing on the hardcore reach, connect, grow, empower, go, and then the other one is interest groups. And interest groups are like your financial group, your counseling group, your grief, your grief share, 
right? Any kind of topic like that, maybe a specific topic, okay? Marriage, all that. There are people who are going to struggle following Jesus because they can't even love their spouse yet. And so those groups are important. Those groups are so important. They need to love Jesus. They definitely need to learn that. Because if you can love someone you can't see, 1 John 4 says you can love God, right? 1 John 4, I read it today. It said, I'll, I'll, I'll do Ryan's paraphrase. It's a new version. If you cannot love your brother or sister in Christ, how can you love a God you cannot see? And so we need to teach our people to love each other in marriage, in relationship, one another, and our love for God will also grow in the same process. Uh, grow means to learn more about your identity in Christ. Learn and use your spiritual gifts. Practice the command to make disciples. For some, growing will be learning where a book of the Bible is located to now understanding the difference of the law and grace. In other words, you're going to have people in your group one week that go, where's Colossians? And then two months later, they're like, I was learning about the law and grace in the book of Romans, and I discovered that. Like, that's what's so cool about groups. And you can even break that down to them. Okay? But here's a question to think about. Um, groups allow us to help guide people in growth. And let me give you an example. Can you, can you imagine Pastor Kuhn for 40 years asking the, the thousands of people who have been to this church, how are you doing spiritually? How are, how's your growth journey going? And tracking all of that. Can you imagine that? You know how big his books would be? His, his, his discipleship follow-up books for people? Okay, Bethany... Uh, all right, she's reading right now through this, and she's dealing with this, and I need to pray for this. That's one. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is, I have no idea how many of our church people are doing spiritually, but when you have a bunch of group leaders deployed, you do. And if you know how someone's doing or are not doing well, you can pray for them, and you can come alongside them and help them. It was never meant that the pastor be the mentor and caretaker of every single person in the church. Ephesians 4 teaches us that God is raised up, that Jesus has appointed apostles, teachers, preachers, evangelists, the fivefold ministry, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. I would love to know how everyone's doing and pray for them and, and help them grow but that's not my job. My job is to help the group leaders and the, our church staff and those around my circle to grow so that they will go help others grow. But can you imagine me following up with everyone in the church? It's impossible. But if we spread out and we multiply ourselves, we can all do it, couldn't we? And it matters because you want someone to go from, I don't know what my identity is to, I know exactly who I am in Christ and nothing Satan says to me is going to mess me up. You know, identity is one of the biggest crises in our world today, right? People don't know what to attribute their sexuality to. We're having to make up new identities. And they, those people are going to be in our church, and we have to help them understand their true identity in Christ. Growth, community groups help us do that. The reason why community groups help us grow is because Week in and week out, we're being challenged and inspired every time we get together. Challenged and inspired. Sunday morning, when you read your Bible on your own, although our statistics we just read earlier said it's dropped, and then when you get with someone, okay? I, how did I, people ask, how did I, how did I lose that 70 pounds I was carrying around? How did I do that? One of the biggest factors was community. Someone walked alongside me to help me stay focused. I had someone to check in with. I had a community group that was doing it with me. And because of that, I was able to, to stay focused. I was constantly reminded. I, I, put a, I put a community around me that said, 
Donuts taste really good, but they don't make you feel good. <laughs> and so that's what I needed. I needed consistency, right? Groups have someone in their life to help them stay consistent and constantly challenged to grow. So I want to bring up a few people because I need to stop talking a little bit. I'm going to take a break. And uh, come on up, Hayden, Christina, Amber. We're going to do our best with our social distancing and whatnot. By the way, I just realized I'm wearing a scarf this entire training. I, would, I never thought I would ever do that. There's some mics right there. You mind grabbing, grabbing one? I invited uh, three of my group members to join me up here to share. Um, and I asked them to be raw and real. I didn't ask them to sugarcoat anything because it is my group members here. Just so happens that all three of them end up being the singles in my group. And so that kind of worked out. God, God kind of brought you guys all in because we had a family group and then we had some singles. The mission of my group was to connect anyone who's not connected at Calvary. Okay, that was why I started my group over, over two years ago. And so God started bringing people in. So the questions I have for you guys is this. Um, how did you get, get connected to our group? And it could be like really basic, like someone called you, someone texted you, whatever. But I'm, at, I'm looking for that. Like, how did you get connected? What happened? How did we get you plugged into our group? Well, you kind of already told my story for the most part. So yeah, this is yeah. Payton, by the Hi, way. I'm Payton. But Hi. you can you can you can fix any of my mistakes. Okay, so just so. real quick, touching on it, I was an IHOP with my son. This became a routine Sunday thing where we didn't have anything to do on Sunday, and I, I was it was on my mind a lot about community. It wasn't Ryan kind of hit it on the head. That was spot on when I told him. And I look up at Troy one day, and I just I look him right in the face. I'm like, Hey, we're going to church. And, he's, and he said, What? And then I said, What? That's kind of how that whole conversation went. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't, well, what do you mean? I was like, well, I don't know. There's a, there's a church, and that, that's where we're going. What are you talking about, Dad? I don't know, okay? But we're going to church today, and that's basically how it happened. And we went, and literally, like you said, the whole service was spot on to the exact things I was thinking about. I came up right to Ryan afterwards. That's how comfortable I felt being here. But like you said, showing up's part of it, right? So I, I don't know. I just had a real urge, and I was pretty much pushed by the Holy Spirit to be there, and I just didn't really really grasp it as much as I do now, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, I did Next Steps actually with Pastor Ryan. So before he was lead pastor, he was leading the Next Steps program. And while I was there, you know, he was pretty much asking <laughs> where I was and everything. So he saw that I needed to be connected. And I was actually just saved when I did the Next Steps program. So I was very, very new into being saved. I was just realizing that there is a difference from going to church, because I've been to church my whole life, and being saved, and I needed to know where to go from there. And so he got me connected with the group. Yep. So I came back to church after um, some many life struggles, became a single parent. I also started with Next Steps with Ryan, um, and I let him know some needs that I had. Um, I very much felt lost. Ryan and I actually have a funny story about my first day back to church. Um, Ryan wasn't supposed to preach that day. Um, something had happened last second, and he was just kind of thrown up to, to, say, um, to say the sermon, um, and it was exactly what I needed that day. Um, I didn't know it. At the time, and we didn't even figure out until many years later in our small group, um, all the parts and pieces that had happened that day. Um, and he just, just helped connect in other ways as a, as a single parent, as a person who um, had just kind of lost everybody. It was nice to be able to feel welcomed and connected. And there are many faces in this room right now I connect with all the time, and I'm grateful for all of you. Yeah. Let's rewind real quick. How did you guys even, because all three of you came because of Sunday morning, or how did you get even connected to Sunday morning? What brought you into this building? So for me, it was actually my daughter. Um, we had to move down here from Wilmington, and I was looking for a private school for her because I wanted to give her the same head start that my son had had. He was in a private preschool, private kindergarten, 
and I had went through a bunch of walkthroughs and could not find a place that I felt welcome because as you can imagine, being a single parent walking into a Christian establishment, sometimes you feel like you have to explain yourself. And when I walked into Calvary, um, Calvary Christian Academy that is, I didn't feel like I had to explain myself. I felt like I was loved for who I was and that from day one, their arms were wide open to both of us. And so when I decided, you know, I need to know more about the Bible than my daughter does because she's teaching me, <laughs> um, I figured if the school is that amazing, the church has to be. And I got to say, it didn't disappoint. It, it's been phenomenal from day one. So it's awesome. Peyton, I mean, I guess we kind of know, but you're in the Air Force, so you just you see the church all the time. But was there anything else that may have gotten you connected here or someone? Or, or was it straight up just God, like, which is good enough, which is great, right? <laughs> I, I put the word just before no, that. No, I mean, I to be fair, it. that's exactly it. I don't have anything better than that. I mean, outside of you directly, like I said, but that yeah. was God pushing on me. be like, hey, go talk to, go talk to Ryan. Yeah. What? what? And yeah. I mean, to reference, to be fair, like, I don't approach people. I don't, I tend to self-isolate even before all this Corona stuff. So like yeah. God telling me, Hey, go talk to the pastor just spoke. Was he a busy guy? Like, what are, what are you talking about? And then I went and talked to him and he was totally cool about it. And he was like, all right, cool. We'll get you connected. You're getting next steps and yeah. you're going to come to my house. All right. That sounds normal. That's what I expected. This whole thing. But yeah, it was God. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And Christina, how about you? Um, really? Most of it was God, um, but actually it was your dad. A lot of a lot of it was your dad. Um, so before coming back, um, your dad actually did Thomas's blessing when he was a baby. Yeah. Um, and I very much wanted to come here, um, but my husband at the time very much did not. Um, and so I just kind of followed suit, and I didn't. Um, and so I just that one day, that one morning. For a blessing felt welcomed and connected and so when everything else unraveled and I was there with my three-year-old and I was like I'm going back to church don't know why but that's what I'm doing um mm -mm. I was like this is this is yeah. where I'm going yeah wow so look how important Sunday morning is Sunday morning has become a huge net and but what's interesting too is there's been micro connections for so many of us to even know that Calvary exists. Just small little shreds of things that take place in our community. It could even be an advertisement for CCA or word of mouth about CCA. So here's the next question. Um, how have you grown spiritually through this? And we, we're, we're short on time, but you know, share, share what you can on how you've grown through community groups. For me, um, my community group gave me accountability um, because I connected well with them and we were pretty similar to the movie where, or the video I should say, where we didn't start right away with, okay, we're gonna read this verse, we're gonna sing this praise and that's how it's going to work. Actually, for a good while, while we were getting connected, it was just about where are you in life? Not where are you spiritually, not you know, just where are you in general in life and what can we help you with? What can we pray for you? You know, if you need an ear to talk to. And with that, we've grown. And now it's, you know, we start out getting connected and we sit down and then we go into, okay, this is what's heavy on my heart. This scripture spoke to me this week. And it gave me accountability to where, well, I needed, I needed to know ahead of time the scripture they were referring to. <laughs> because unfortunately, I didn't. And then I would sit there and I'd kind of feel bad because, you know, obviously they're in their word and I believe in the word, but I wasn't in my word. And so it's made me accountable to continue my own growth outside of my group as well. That's good. I don't know how to follow that up, um, but <laughs> yeah, it's pretty spot on the head. I mean, I, to be fair, I was lost for a long time. Um, I, I actually chosen to get baptized when I was about 12 and then I came back and then like I said I came back to God and he was to be fair it's all him I didn't do much of it I was trying to struggle against it as much as possible but then I started going to the community groups and it was just if Jesus is the foundation for our spiritual being it's like community groups are just the structure for the house it's like without that I wouldn't be the 
I don't know, I wouldn't have the strength I have now. Like the, the resolution, just like you were saying earlier about telling the devil no. Like whatever schemes you got, it's fine. I don't, I'm not interested. It's cool. Yeah. I heard it all before. I've listened to a lot of it. I've re- read a lot of other things outside of my own life. And uh, I don't know, just having them as a checks and balances of like helping me make sure that I'm on the right course. Like you're even talking about path and like guiding them on their, like it's like, I knew what it was, but I always argued with myself. I pretended all this other stuff I wanted to understand, all this worldly knowledge. <sighs> None of it was real. None of it, like, and I knew that. In a weird way, like, I knew that it just never, everything felt superficial. And that's why I was so frustrated. That's why I was so depressed. I was depressed for like seven years. Community group changed that. Like, coming to church on Sundays definitely helps too. Like, I love singing now. It's amazing. But like, community groups, like, that baseline changed everything for me. And that's, I don't, I hope I'm not understating that. <laughs> yeah, you're good. How about you? How has that helped you grow spiritually? Community group for spiritual growth was really that it was a place where um, we were all so different, even though we had so many similar interests and we we're all parents. Um, but it was somewhere where People were not judgmental. Um, So no matter where I was in feeling Mm. lost and feeling like I couldn't talk or couldn't say things, um, I knew that no matter what, that in that group, in that surrounding, Mm. that I could say whatever I needed to say, whatever was on my heart, and we we all just, we pray together, we we eat together. It is exactly what I needed. Um, And that helps me to... To help I mean I miss I miss my littles yeah. um <laughs> yeah. it helps me to help them feel connected as well um and hopefully to help others here in a little while as well that's good any last things you want to say just to encourage or inspire those who are considering leading a group something that just means a lot to you from the community group you've been in um so for me it was the grace that was given and I think a lot of us have that in our groups. It, it really made a difference because I was one of the OG members. <laughs> so when I was part of the group, I was the only single. <laughs> yep. Everyone else was married and, and all of this, but I never felt out of place. And I think that's the most important thing about a group is don't not invite someone because you think they don't fit the demographic either. Um, invite someone. It, it, they can be completely different, but I, I can assure you, if your grace is being given, they're going to feel right at home. And it made all the world of difference for me and led the way to a couple more singles coming in the group and getting that grace as <laughs> yeah. well. So, Yep. Awesome. Go ahead, baby. If you got something, you can. <laughs> so I guess I should touch on, I, I came to the group with like kind of, Really weird ex- expectations, I guess. Like, I wasn't really sure. It was just also, like, kind of weirdly sudden, but not sudden because it was all planned out. But I walk in, and one of the group members just comes up and immediately hugs me. <laughs> and normally, I'm like, all right, this is too much for me. But, like, it was just so warm and inviting, and it was lovely. I mean, you talked about hug early on the screen, and I just, like, it stands out to me. Like, I don't know. Like, it doesn't matter where you are. And like you said, like, being different, like, just inviting that person in your home and being who you are, that is... That is way more than most of the world gives each other. Way more people interact and just be honest with each other and open and intense and meaningful. <sighs> you just don't see that. <laughs> like in the rest of the world, and you're talking about Facebook and all the other stuff, like it's a real connection. And that person came up to me, didn't know me at all, and you just introduced me and that's it. And he's just like, all right, cool, I'm gonna hug you now. Like I'm not gonna name <laughs> drop him, but I was like, all right, it's cool. Like at first it was weird, but it became normalcy. It became something I, I wanted. Every, every weekend or every week that we had them on Friday, I was, I was waiting for that hug. I was excited. I didn't tell him that. He might be figuring it out now. I don't know. But that's the point <laughs> is, is that I needed that more than I even realized. And so being yourself and just being honest with the people in front of you and giving them grace, that's just something the world doesn't even have. And that's God showing through, and it just speaks, it spoke to me so, on so many levels every time. It's so meaningful. Well, it, I feel like your context, it would mean a lot because you're from Texas, you're here in Dover, don't know anyone really except for your coworkers and, and on base, your, your airmen and those who work with you. Who is it, who, is, who are you really going to trust? 
who are you really going to confide in? And see, we as a church, I'm going to be, I'm going to put us on the spot right now. We need to do a better job with our Air Force. We have Air Force coming in town who don't, they don't know anyone. And they're, and when they come, by the way, and they tell us that I, I, the, the atmosphere on the base is not good. And they come and say, I need a group. I'll be honest with you, church. There's times where we haven't had room. We don't have groups. And so it's just, wow. And like the Paydens out there who, by the way, he's here by himself. So if his kid needed help and he had to go away, what does he do? Well, guess what? Guess who's been watching his kid when he needs a break? Christina. Why? Because they were in a community group. We got connected and he had someone. And then we've taken care of Troy as well, but not as much as Christina has and others and Amber. So having a community group provided a place for his son to be watched so he could get some R&R. You see what I'm saying? Even that means a lot to people. So that's hospitality, by the way. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming up here. <clears throat> Keep your mics to the right because they're now dirty and infected. But No, I'm just, joking, I'm just joking. But thank you so much. Appreciate it. Let's give him a hand real quick for, for sharing. <clears throat> They do not have the virus. Let's put that disclaimer out. We talked about reach. So far, you've heard stories of reaching, getting connected, growing, okay? And by the way, we have so many examples in this room right now. You could tell stories. We're now on to empower. Groups help us empower. Groups give us all a place to serve and lead, The gifts of teaching, leading, administration, hospitality, encouragement, faith, evangelism, and the list goes on. Can you imagine on Sunday morning that we have everyone who's gifted at hospitality come in and plug in their skillets around the room with electric, you know, plug it into all the sockets and start making food for everyone? Probably wouldn't be a good idea on a Sunday morning, would it? It doesn't really fit the agenda. Hey, we're having pancakes. Everyone come around. Let's, you know, we'll take offering after that, and we'll do some worship in a minute. It's hard to do that, right? What about the person who can't sing, and you're like, please don't let them on stage? What about, but that person is super gifted at encouraging people. Where do we put them? Well, we have places on Sunday morning, but community groups empower people to use their gifts, not just for 15 minutes before service starts and 15 minutes after, but they can use that gift to help a Peyton or a Christina or an Amber, their life be changed. In other words, community groups allow people to have a meaningful impact in their world. And that's what people want. They want to have a meaningful impact. They want to make a difference. How many of you struggle to go to bed at night if you did not fulfill tasks? You don't feel fulfilled. That's me. If I don't get things done on my list, I do not feel feel fulfilled, and I stay up until I finish them. There are people who have no idea how awesome they are in the, in the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God, because Sunday morning doesn't allow them Not that they can't, but they just don't have the opportunity or the spot to fill to use those giftings. So community groups allow us a place to empower them. And uh, you have a chance to practice those. You have a chance to walk alongside someone and disciple them. Um, here's, Here's an important scripture that, man, I've overlooked so many times. But in the past couple of years, I'm like, wow. It means so much when you think about community groups. Uh, go to 2 Timothy 2.2 for me on the screen. You have heard me teach these things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Now this is Paul telling Timothy... You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people. So one generation, now Timothy's two generation, third generation is trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others 
fourth generation. Wow, that's, that's multiplication. That's empowering. You've heard me say this. I'm going to say it again. We have so many people who have a large bank account full of amazing scriptures in their hearts and minds, and they're so mature. And guess what? They haven't passed enough on. They, they, they have a generation to pass to, to give to. And as group leaders, we have to believe in people and empower them to practice this. And what am I saying? Groups allow us the opportunity to step aside and let the next generation lead that group for a few weeks. And then we come alongside them and go, you could do this a little differently. Maybe try this a little bit better next week. And then the list goes on. Groups empower, give us the opportunity to empower people to make disciples. Can you imagine me giving you all a chance to preach on Sunday morning? Can't. I'd be fired. Not sure. But, and some of you aren't meant to be, you're not called to preach and teach on, in a service like that, but you're called to help make disciples, and you can do what you can do, and groups give us another opportunity for you to use those giftings. It's amazing. It's, that's what I love about it, because in one group night, Eight people could be using their giftings at the same time. Wow. So empower people. And I'm encouraging you group leaders this year to identify one couple or one person, whatever your, your kind of group makeup is. Look for that one who shows great faith, who demonstrates great faith, who demonstrates a passion to help other people follow Jesus, and let them be your apprentice, and let them help you lead. So you can empower what? The next one, the last one, to go. Community groups help us go or multiply. Groups develop disciples of Jesus who will go and start the disciple-making journey again, which is reach, connect, grow, empower, and go. You're looking at a product of Calvary. You're looking at someone who was... Well, obviously, reached because I lived in a pastor's home, and they took time to make sure I was in church where God got a hold of me. But in the home, I watched God in my home. Jesus was in my home for sure. And so I was connected for obvious reasons, being a pastor's kid. I grew. The Holy Spirit empowered me. My parents empowered me. My Sunday school teacher empowered me. Diane's in here. Pastor John empowered me. All those things mattered. Do you know, though, that not once was I really in a healthy community group my entire life? There was one person, other than my parents, who brought me in close and cared about me and taught me how to read the Bible, how to pray, how to serve. One person. And that was awesome. Awesome time in my life. It was in youth ministry. But you know what God had to do? God literally had to set me on my own journey to learn how to disciple people one-on-one -on -one or in twos or threes and in groups. Now, I've been wondering, do I have the gift of apostleship or something? Because apostles can start things. God gives them the ability to start things. A lot of them are missionaries, okay? They're starters. Pastor Kuhn, he's an apostle. Pastor Kuhn, he starts things. This guy came into Dover, Delaware and started things that no other churches were doing. That's an apostle. It's a gift that over, gets overlooked a lot. Well, I didn't know how to do groups. I had no idea. But over 11 years ago, I decided to start doing groups for youth, and God has just shown me the way. I never had a model for a small group. Did you know that? That's why I know you can do it. I know you can do it. And by the way, if you don't think you can do it, I bet you have a friend who likes to talk and listen, hopefully, right? And ask good questions with you and listen and, and, and help you lead the group. You can always do this in pairs or in threes if you had to. We, we it's imperative that groups have the focus of multiplying. 
because they're meant to bring in and reach new people. And we will not be able.